This video covers chapter two, section two of the textbook, Think Python. You can get more information in the description below. A variable is a name that refers to a value. So you can think of this either as a label or some sort of container that allows you to abstract whatever that value means. We'll get into a little more about what that means as we progress through the chapters. Uh, the assignment statement is going to be a statement that we use to create new variables and give them values. So we're assigning the values to the variables. And you can think of the assignment statement as a kind of pattern where you have the variable on the left and the value on the right. And a state diagram is a common way to illustrate which variables represent what values. Um, so values can change through your code, especially if you're using things like loops, which we'll also get into in later chapters. Um, so using a state diagram to keep track of the value of your variables can be very helpful. So taking a look at our CoLab notebook here, again, if you want a copy of this, you can go to File in the upper left-hand corner by the CoLab logo. You can go to File and save a copy and drive. This will save a copy of this in your Google Drive so you can edit it and add things. Otherwise, it's just a master copy. You'll be able to find a link to this document for Chapter 2 in the description below. So we'll go back to the textbook, and I'm going to just copy this comment here to see if I can find this in the textbook. So here it is. So we have this code here. <clears throat> Again, I'm not going to include the chevrons. I'm going to copy and paste them over, though, but I'll get rid of them in the uh, in the master copy here, or in the, uh, the notebook. So I'll go ahead and run this. And unlike some of the other code we've run, we're not going to get anything back, because all we're doing is creating a reference between our, value, or our variable and our values. Um, and this is what an assignment statement looks like. So the assignment statement consists of the variable on the left, the single equal sign. So this is the assignment operator in Python, very different than uh, using the mathematical equal, where that's more of a, uh, a test of equality. Uh, and then our, ver our value will be on the right. So variable on the left, assignment operator, and then our value on the right. And we'll get into operators and operands a little later, but this is these two things here. So the variable and the value are the operands, and the equal sign is the operator. Uh, and then we have that for n equals 17 and pi equals 3.14159, so on. So now that we've uh, created these variables, let's go back. Actually, let's, let's search this comment here in the textbook. <clears throat> so this will be our next, next piece of code here. And again, you can copy and paste all of this. You definitely want to take out these things here. And uh, as we saw from the last section, if we try to run this, it's going to evaluate each of these expressions here, um, but it's only going to show visible the output of the last one. So if we want to show all of these, we'll need to print them. Uh, I won't do the last one. Um, so we see that message evaluates to a string, which is true, and n evaluates to 17, which is an integer, and pi evaluates to a float. So there's some additional things we can do with this as well. I'm just going to add in a code block. Feel free to do this. And I also encourage you to do this. You can add in code blocks. You can add in text blocks. Make these yours. Um, this is for your reference. This is for you to follow along with and experiment and play around with the code. Um, I encourage you to try errors out. Um, see what changes, Google those errors. Uh, programmers make a lot of mistakes. It's you know no different than really making typos or anything anything like that. So the more mistakes you make early on, the more informed your successes will be. Uh, the more exposed you are to making mistakes, the less it'll sting when it happens. Um, so feel free to to explore this, but I'm gonna play around with some of this real quick. So another another thing I showed you was the the length function, so len. We can take len of message and we get the integer 42. We can even take the type of that to verify that that outputs an integer. All right, if we take the type of len message, we get an integer. And of course, we know that message is a string, but what the length or the len function does is it tells us how many characters are in a string or how many items are in a list or a dictionary or a set or a tuple. We'll get into that a little later as well. 
but when we run this, we get 42. So we know that there's 42 uh, characters inside of message. Uh, let's let's try that with n and see what happens. We get a type error. So we get a type error, and it says object of type int uh, object of type int has no length. Uh, and the same thing with actually let's verify that. Same thing. Type error object of type float has no length. Um, so these are a couple of things that you can you can play it around with. Uh, another thing too, and we'll get into this a little more when we talk about strings. But if we take message and we use our square bracket notation and we pass a zero, we get an A, and that's going to refer to this zeroth element here, the zeroth character, uh, and then we can iterate through that manually. So one gives us that N. Two is going to give us that D. And you'll notice that we started on zero, so we want we'd want to call this the first. Uh, character in the string, um, but in reality, it's the zeroth character in that string. So when we're using indexing, you can think of you can think of um, indices as like labels, and that label just arbitrarily starts at zeros. It's not entirely arbitrary. There's good reasons for that, but I won't get into explaining why here. It'll probably come out in uh, later chapters. With that, thank you for joining. The next video will cover. Chapter 2, Section 3, which discusses a little more about variables, specifically the rules for creating variables, and introduces the concept of keywords.